because it's quite complicated today, it's very popular to think that there is an authentic self, right? That we can name ourselves, that we can uh, kind of name our sexuality, we can name our uh, uh, interests, we can name what we want in a partner, right? You know, so even when you go on a dating app and you list what you want, it's almost like, you know, you know what you want, you know what you're looking for, in the other person and you know you've got an idea of the type of person you want to hang out with simone Ve calls this cannibalism i, I want to hopefully i'll come back to that if i'll try and remember it because uh, uh, simone Ve is very good on this but we um we want to hang out with people who are like us and c.s lewis he talked about uh, two types of friendship and he says the first type of friendship is that friendship in which you meet somebody and you you know share the same political views the same love of a certain thinker or this this shared music taste whatever it is you know you you meet somebody and you have that sense of kindred spirits because you know you're glad you can be understood oh we both like this or we both don't like this right and sometimes it's what you don't like it unifies you even more and you're say at a party you meet that person and you find that you have these shared likes and these shared dislikes and friendship can be forged around that and that's community right that's that's where you develop community then lewis says but then there's a type of friendship that's much more confusing right it's the friendship in which you meet someone and you don't agree on anything right uh, and you argue about all kinds of things and yet a, a bond is formed a lifelong bond right and that hints at where we're going in this talk so i'll put that to one side i'm going to stick with community for a bit longer but remember that right the friendship in which you encounter someone who thinks the same as you and it feels great but then that weird friendship where you encounter someone who doesn't. And it's the same thing as I say with dating. And this is why dating apps can often be uh, kind of almost fundamentally flawed is because they kind of offer or look like they offer what you're looking for, right? Uh, but they then close off that possibility of meeting someone who is in a different class from you a different educational bracket from you, a different set of interests from you, right? Which is what a lot of the great romantic novels are about, right? You know, and Shakespeare explores it is when two people come together who are precisely not in each other's community, right? Which dating apps in a sense are designed to prevent happening, right? And before dating apps, of course, there was communities that did that and aristocratic circles that were designed to do that or whatever it was, you know, keep keep to your own, right? Keep to your own in whatever way that plays out, right? But, and as I say, I don't want to jump ahead yet, <laughs> but you can already see where I'm going here is that, that there's something, and I'll use the word love, right? There's something about love that attaches to difference, to otherness, uh, that is actually sparked in the place where you least expect it. Uh, and yeah, I'll mention Simone Weil's cannibalism here. Uh, you know, she talks about how whenever you, whenever you treat someone as a way of fulfilling you, right? So you have a certain set of things that you feel you're missing that you would really like, uh, and you list those out and you meet someone who fulfills those needs that you feel that you have then you treat them like food they, and you cannibalize them so she calls them a, it's a cannibalistic love right you use the other in order to give yourself sustenance to give yourself something they are a substance to feed off in contrast she talks about a love that focuses not on the other as food <clears throat> but rather on the other as lacking as desire which really fits neatly with Lacan's definition of love uh, in which you provide a harbor for the desire of the other which is the longing of the other which is the lack of the other uh, that dimension of them that can't be named that's why in love if someone says why do you love me uh, and you list a whole pile of reasons you're missing the point right because there's something about love 
that is not, oh, you're funny or you're attractive or I find you entertaining or all these things you can list, right? If it's just that, it's not love. And that's why somebody can, in a way, be offended by that. <laughs> I go, well, and that's why even that question, would you love me if I was, you know, if I was a cat? <laughs> would you love me if I was a worm? Would you love me if I, I was in a terrible accident? Right, what, what is that question about? Well, that question, in a sense, is trying to get to the je ne sais quoi, right? Or the objet a of the other, that unspeakable dimension of the other that isn't a thing. And that's why, like a Sapanchich says, you know, the only in a sense, answer to the question of why do you love me is because you remind me of you.